Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm delighted to have with me today, very late, well, very early in the morning, Team Dylan White, uh, Richard Riappel. Richard, firstly, how are we doing? I'm good. I'm good. I just finished enjoying the boxing. It's great to see Dylan win, get that W, get that revenge. And that's what it's about. I know you know Dylan better than most people. Um, yeah. How much pressure was there on Dylan's head? Obviously, we know how big the fight was. We know what he wanted initially before the Povetkin first fight, which was a world title shot. But he's, he's remained cool, calm, collected throughout the last few months. But obviously, walking, doing that ring walk, he was jumping, he was excited. But he was going in with a lot of pressure, wasn't he? Absolutely. You know, it's not, it's not easy when you have so many people that are, are relying on you because you have to bear in mind he's got a stable of fighters and, you know, pretty much dependent on his, his successes, you know, and that's how they go on these big bills. And he knew he needed to get himself in a position. He came up short last time, just a, um, lack, a slight lack of co um, concentration, and then he paid a price. So he, he was coming in with all of that on his shoulders. That's why I tell everybody, you know, Dillian has, he's cut from a different cloth and, and especially in regards to his, his mental fortitude, very strong mentally. And that's one of the things that I picked up from him, being around him from, from the beginning, very strong mentally. And things like, like this is, it's nothing to him because he's been through harder things in life and people wouldn't know the half. So, you know, he got through it. I didn't expect anything less. So, and onwards and upwards. That first round, both of them were throwing leather. It oh. looked like they both wanted to fight it and quickly <laughs> wanted the reaction. I was like, ooh. ooh. It's funny because Dillian, like he saw, he heard him and he seemed, he, well, he kind of stumbled slightly and he just went straight in with that windmill right hand over the top, that classic, overhand right and it's just slightly missed and there was one time in the fight where he threw at the same time with with Povyekin and he landed with that right hand flush he felt I don't think he even realized that he hurt him but you can see Povyekin he felt that shot he stepped back straight away and you can just tell that you know his punch resistance has gone you know not fully not entirely but it was a it was a nice clean one, two, but I've seen Dillian hit way harder than that on the pads. You know, he just threw his hands and that's it. He was, it was game over. We just hit the spot and ended it with that beautiful left hook, the signature hook. So game over, man. On to the next. Obviously, Dillian made a few changes in camp. He brought in Harold, uh, the Shadow Knight, who obviously formerly worked with Lennox Lewis as well. Um, he brought his own nutri old nutritionist bag, no. some conditioning as yeah. well. So he went kind of back to his, the way he used to be. Um, did that obviously must have benefited him hugely in this fight? Absolutely. You know, you can tell what they were working with. They're working with um, a certain type of defense. I see him stepping back and doing the Philly shell, um, which made it very difficult for Povyekin to, to get in. And on top of that, you know, he gave him a stick, a stick arm. So when he did come in, you know, he was, he, nobody's arms are longer than Dillian's, you know. If he extended, you saw what everybody saw when he extended his arms, he was punching like just, just around his bicep. He was hitting nowhere and nothing. So, what he, and he was really good on his feet. I don't know if everybody um, knows that or was conscious of that. Every time he came in, he stepped back at the right times and he fought at the right times. He threw his hands at the right time. Perfect. And, this is, sim is similar to what he'd done, you know, in the first fight. But then there was, obviously, he tried a different strategy. He was, like, more catch and shoot. Catch and shoot, which was successful at the same time. But it's also dangerous against somebody with that type of pedigree because that's where he works. And everybody, you know, with this fight, he was throwing those overhands. He was still fainting, getting Dillian to react. But Dillian was really disciplined with his distance with his jab, everything was perfect, he was spot on today. And he busted him up. You could see him, his face was, was reddening, you know, it was perfect. 
It was perfect, perfect performance. So, so we'll see what 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 um, opponent um, Eddie Hearn offers offers next. You know, ideally everybody wants to see this this wilder fight, and I think it can it can happen. It can happen for sure. But you know, Wilder is a mad thing. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what Wilder's on. I think he's actually still trying to press um, Fury and his team to make the trilogy. So I don't know where that stands at the moment, but we're going to have to wait and see next time on Dragon Ball Z. Stay tuned. <laughs> Should you know, you mentioned earlier about how Dylan, people rely on Dylan to be on these mega shows, so he looked yeah. after them. But talk a bit about his kind of generosity. Obviously, we saw Chris Congo, obviously Fabio Wardy, we saw Yusuf Komari, all on these shows. And, and probably these fighters probably won't, won't normally get slots on these kind of shows if it wasn't for having a manager or a person or a friend like Dillian yeah. White. We also saw at the end, Dillian took his stool to Povetkin, made him sit down. Obviously, it's a higher stool as well, put water on his head. Talk to me a little bit about his generosity and, and, and what he's like to be around at times. Yeah, he's um, he's got a big heart. You know, he's the type of person, you know, you come in the camp and if he takes to you, he would give you an opportunity on the show. And you have to bear in mind, there's a lot of people in the game that could also they also have the power to get you on the shows and get you certain slots, but they wouldn't go out of their way to do that. But the difference between Dillian, he would actually do that. <laughs> that's, and that's what makes Dillian Dillian. A lot of people don't see that side of him, but he's helped a lot of people. You know, he's helped myself, he's helped all these people that you see on the cards. But then, you know, you know, he'll give you the opportunity, but you have to make something of that opportunity. You know, your, your opponents are not going to come in, you're not going to get in the ring with your opponents and they're going to lay down for you. You have to fight. You know what I mean? You have to fight. And more times out of 10, it's going to be a tough and durable opponent. So if you get that win, you know, the, the stocks will rocket 10x. But if you don't, you know, you, know, you may get another opportunity and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's hard. So, you know, you want to grab the opportunity. You know, you want to take the opportunity. And that's how it is, but he does this. And that's why I always have respect for him because these opportunities, you, you don't just get opportunities to just box on pay-per-view shows. You, know, you don't see, you, there's a lot of fighters that haven't boxed on pay-per-view shows before. They don't know how it feels like, what, what to expect, what it entails. But there's fighters on their debuts and some fighters that you would say don't deserve to be on the, frankly, just doesn't, don't deserve to be on pay-per-view shows, but they get the slots. So, you know, you have to give the man, you have to give the man credit, 100%. What do you want to see next from Dill? Obviously, I know he wants a world title shot. It looks unlikely to happen any time in the next kind of 12 months with Joshua and Fury potentially tied in to a two-fight deal. But he's fought back-to-back -back Povetkin. He fought Chisora twice. He fought Parker, Oscar Rivas. You know, who's, who's that name out there? I know Eddie's talking about Deontay Wilder, but does Dylan go straight into a Wilder fight? Can that fight happen? How does he get on with the Wilder? It's going to be difficult. Wilder wants Fury. AJ is tied up with, with, with Fury. They've signed contracts now. They would want, they would favour the Fury fight versus Joshua over everything else, especially the organisations. I don't know about WBO at the minute because there's always some type of issues regarding um, uh, mandatories, et cetera. But money talks, it's just that simple, you know, and that's, that's the biggest money, that's the biggest money fight in boxing right now. So the organizations, of course, are gonna be like, hey, we can pull a few strings and you know, we can make this happen. Of course, why not? So that's gonna be, obviously that's gonna tie the belts for, for one year. Let's just say. Um, so he's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be the waiting game. I guess it's we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see what happens. And it's it's so complicated because there hasn't been any announcements on on the Fury and Joshua fight yet. So that's that's in the balance, but I'm guessing they'll probably put out some news once they confirm confirm the venue, etc. And the um the country where they wanna host the fight. So everybody just has to wait and see. It's a, it's a real shame. And I feel like Dillian definitely deserves to be world champion right now or 
at least have a shot at the world title. Should be world champion. Because he's been, listen, check his resume, check his, his fought back to back. It's not easy. It's not easy. You might not like Dillian, but back to back, like his resume speaks for itself and he deserves the opportunity. But, you know, I believe that, you know, you get out what you put in and you will get what you deserve in the end. You know, you just have to keep, stay on the track, stay on the road. So we'll see. Okay, All right, Richard, before I let you go, um, just, a, just a quick note. Um, a big announcement was made this week by uh, Everlast. Um, obviously, they already work with people like Ramla Ali, Joshua Boatsi, Connor Ben, etc. Um, announced a big deal that they're going to now look to um, sponsor 52 other fighters that they're looking to sign potentially this year. Um, this could only be good for the sport of boxing, right? Yeah, it's amazing for the, for the sport of boxing. And it's, it's great to see them supporting, you know, um, up-and-coming fighters and also fighters that haven't even fought on the, on the, in the pro ranks yet. Like, for instance, um, Sandy Ryan, which is, um, which is uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it, it gives more motivation. Not everybody gets deals, these big endorsement deals, unfortunately, in boxing. You know, you have to, you have to really suit uh, a type of profile for them to really invest in you. And so that's that's amazing. That's 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 excellent, and it, it gives it's going to definitely give boxers more motivation to keep on pushing because you just don't know what is around the corner. Like in my um, with me, I was, I was boxing. I didn't know that these major brands were were watching me. So you know, and it gives you more motivation. So like, if you can attract brands and have brands back you, then imagine what else you could do if you carry on on the path. And that's that's amazing. You have Shanta Cameron as well. I remember I follow her on the uh, IG and I follow her um, her career, and she she got a sponsor as well. So that's that's really she's world champion as well, isn't it? Yeah, she's yeah. That's it's amazing. It's amazing. But yeah, so I, f- I think it's a good move. And once things open up, um, there's going to be a lot of competition because you got the you know Adi free strike gang there. And they're definitely going to be competing. I'll tell you that. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. So once things open up, we're going to see who's the best best dressed. <laughs> so you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Looking forward to to seeing what what the future holds when things open up and and getting that human interaction. I know the fans, everybody watching this. We need a boxing fans back in the arenas. Trust me, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be epic, and we're gonna really, um, I would say, embrace and appreciate being able to to be back in the arenas. It's like, you know, when you you have something and you take it for granted until it's taken away from you, then you realize how how important it was, or how it made you feel, or how much you um, you miss it, appreciate it. And that's what it feels like now. So when we get back into the arenas, we're definitely going to be happy. I tell you that it's going to be something. So. Absolutely, uh, Richard. I always appreciate your time on this. It's very late. It's uh, two forty-five a.m. The clock's obviously gone forward an hour. So I appreciate you jumping on this late to to catch up quickly, and and, and definitely we'll catch up with you very very soon. Yeah, for sure. Let's do Richard this. Richard Riakpo, IFL TV. Thank you very Peace. much.